Hey guys and welcome to Tech with Nick. I'm your host Niklas and today we're going to look at how you can host your own mail server. So let's get started. Why shouldn't you host your own email server? In this video, I'll show you exactly how I host my own email server. There's a couple of important things you need to know before you start doing this. First of all, because of all the spam that's getting sent every single day, most of email providers like Google, Microsoft has blocked having your own email server. This means if this is something you really want to do, you need to find a specific IP that's whitelisted that has a very good reputation. Most of the ones I've tried, DigitalOcean, Hetzner, Vault, they were all blocked on Gmail. So I couldn't send emails directly to Gmail. The second thing is these providers have a huge list of a blocked IPs. So you need to make sure if you set up a server before you start configuring it, you need to check if it's blocked. If it's blocked, destroy it, create a new server. And you can try different server locations and get different IPs. The third thing, some of these providers like DigitalOcean will block port 25. This means it's hard to send emails. You need to have a TLS certificate to be able to send emails. I do recommend you do use a TLS certificate. A couple of alternatives to self-hosting is either going to like Google Workspace, Proton Mail, where you can all use a custom domain. Second one is using a dedicated email hosting where these guys have done everything in their power and have hosted this for ages. So the IPs are whitelisted and you can use these to send to the top providers. One of these is MX Route, another is Server MX. These are your options. With that out of the way, I'm going to show you exactly how I host my mail server using the Docker mail server. So let's get started. All right guys, we get started. It's very simple. You do need a server with a static IP address. Second, you do need a domain name. Once you got those, you're going to set up Cloudflare. So what you're going to do, you're going to have your server IP. If you haven't set up a server yet, go to Digital to Notion, Hetzner, set up a normal droplet or server. I use Ubuntu, you add a new record. This record needs to be an A record. For the domain name, I'll use the and link it directly to the IP. This is the first step, you hit save. Remember to disable the proxy. The next thing you need to do, you need to set an MX record. So set the root for the main domain and set the server you just set. In my case, I set mail.techwithnick and set the priority to 10. Next thing, we need to set up a PTR record. The domain you just used, so mail.techwithnick, we're going to add the server IP and add dot in dash addr.arpa. We'll save this. This is the first steps we need to do in Cloudflare. Next, we need to SSH into the server we just created. So I'll open up a terminal. With the terminal open, you need to SSH into your server without the fingerprint. Now we're in the server, we need to update the server. So we'll run the sudo apt update and sudo app upgrade. That's why. This will start updating the server. While we wait for this, guys, if this has helped you in any way, shape or form, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe and ring the notification bell. Thank you and back to the content. All right, guys, with the server updated and rebooted, we're ready to get going. So we need to create a new directory. I'll just call my mail. Gonna CD into that. In the description below, I have left the links for how to do this. But there's a couple of files you need to download. We're going to set a local variable for the URL we need to use. And then inside this folder, we're going to get the compose.jml and the mail server.in. With those files downloaded, we're ready to continue the configuration. First, we're going to open the compose.yaml file. Inside this configuration, we need to change the hostname. Change the hostname to your current domain. In my case, it's mail.techwinic.com. It's the same one you used on Cloudflare a couple of minutes ago. With that change, we need to add the SSL so we can use that in the server. We'll be creating a new line here. This is the environment. We need to type the SSL underscore type and equals let's encrypt. Under the volumes, we need to add the let's encrypt folder so we can access the certificates directly from Docker. With that done, we can save and exit the file. Now now we need to edit the environment file. In here, there's a couple of settings we need to adjust. First of all, we need to add the postmaster address. Normally, you'll just use postmaster and your domain. If you want to, you can use the antivirus. This requires a considerable amount of resources. And this requires at least two gigabyte of RAM just to run the antivirus. And it's disabled as default, so I'll just leave it like that. In the field for the SSL type, we need to add let's encrypt. There's a bunch more setting. I'll leave a link in the description for the configuration so you can see exactly what each value does and you can adjust them to your needs. But with this done, I'm going to exit and save. Now we need to set up the SSL certificate. First, we're going to remove certbot if this is already installed. Next, we're going to use snap to install certbot. We're going to prepare the certbot command by running this command. And lastly, we're going to run the certbot command. You should only run this command if you don't have anything on the server. You need to enter your email address, then you need to accept the terms, and then they're asking if you want to receive emails from them. I'll say no. Now you need to enter the domain you used on Cloudflare. And with this done, you should have a TLS certificate on the server for your domain. We need to install Docker Compose. With Docker Compose installed, we're ready to start the script. So all you do is run Docker Compose up, and Docker will now install and pull the image. With the container running, you got two minutes to create the first user. So what you need to do is run this docker-ti, and then the name of the container. So if it didn't change anything in the Docker file, 
is mail server, then email add, and then the email you want to add. Write your password for the email. That's how you add new emails. So this concludes setting up the mail server. It's now running and you can add new emails as you like. You can add new domains if you want to. So if you got multiple domains, all you need to do is add a new certificate for each new domain you add. And then you can just with this command, add all the emails you want. The next step is use the advanced DNS setup. I'll link the guide down in the description. This is the DKIM, DMARC and SPF. So you need to set this up. So whenever you send a mail, the mail providers can see where the mail comes from. And that is in fact yours. All right, guys, this concludes the episode. And now you know exactly how you can set up your personal email server. If you like this content, please hit the like button, subscribe and ring the notification bell. So you'll get notified next time I upload. I highly appreciate it. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer. That's all for me. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.